so before we get started, I just wanted to take a minute to say that um, this was probably one of the best classes I've ever taken in college, and I hope that everyone that's in the class agrees with me. And so I just wanted to take a quick second to give a round of applause to Jeff, who, without whom this would not have been possible. Okay, so uh, we're the last group. We are Team Photon Monks, and I'm just going to go ahead and introduce everybody. On the far right, in the, or I'm sorry, on the stage far right, polo shirt, that's Robert. He was the, also the TA for the class. He was responsible for game design, uh, gameplay programming, and he was also our producer. He was the one cracking whip every day. Uh, next to him is Danny Dalton. He was uh, the composer for all of our music, which is all original, and he also did the um, sound effect system and all the music implementation code, code side. Uh, yeah. Uh, next to him is Nicole Oliver. She is our artist, and uh, she is the sole reason why we're not sailing around in cubes anymore. Um, then we have Ben Shokati. He is our um, networking guy and also did some of the AI for ship attack ships. Um, then we have Ryan. He was sort of our lead developer uh, slash code optimization guy slash everything that broke. We went to Ryan to have him fix it. Um, he was also our graphics guy. He did a lot of the really cool shiny effects that you'll see in a moment. Um, then we have Chung. He is uh, our... <laughs> Give Chung a round of applause. <laughs> Chung gets a round of applause. He was responsible for programming our UI. And we have, finally, Daniel Barajas. He was our networking guy and also our A-star pathfinding guy. And my name is Alex, and I was the designer, or I was one of the designers, and I programmed some of the gameplay logic. And um, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. OK, so we're going to go ahead and get started right now. Um, this is our game. It is a pirate. Oh, yeah, sorry. OK, so before we set sail, we need two, play two players from the audience. Right back there and way back in the back right there. OK, so um, as they're coming up, um, I'm just really going to quickly explain what our game is about. It is a pirate ship combat game. You play as a pirate, and the goal of the game is to be the most infamous pirate on the high seas. Um, and you do that by killing other players and taking their booty. In addition, you can kill um, trade ships and take their gold, and you use the gold to upgrade your ship and make yourself more powerful. So um, our game also supports Xbox 360 controllers, which our players who came down have the option of using if they'd like. And we're going to get underway here in a second. OK, so this is our game. Um, each ship has different sail colors to differentiate them from the other ships. Um, this is the very most basic ship that you have. Um, it has no upgrades. And so you kind of sail around. You're always moving forward. And you sail around. And you can shoot cannons off of your left and right sides. Daniel, you want to shoot a cannon? Cool. Oh, turn the music up. Perfect. You gotta, you gotta like, alt tab and then alt tab back into it. So he's already on fire. <laughs> So um, I'll really briefly explain our UI. Uh, up in the upper left-hand corner, we have the gold and infamy meters. The gold is represented by the little gold coin, and the infamy is the skull. The winner of the game is the player who has the most infamy at the end of 15 minutes. Right now, Daniel is the player in first place, and you can see that because he has the Jolly Roger as his sails. Oh, and all of the names are randomly generated at the beginning of the game. So if you want to go back to the score screen really quickly, you can see everybody's names. Uh, up in the upper left-hand corner, you have the health bar, which is the blue bar. And those uh, jewels, the circular buttons, are the they represent the upgrades that your ship has. So the red, the red button that's currently highlighted right now is the uh, 
the hull upgrade, which makes you harder to kill, and also increases the number of cannons that you can shoot at the same time. Uh, the other upgrades are... are uh... <laughs> the yellow upgrade is the cannon upgrade, that'll increase the damage that you do per shot, and the final upgrade is the sail upgrade, it increases your speed and turning radius. Players can also repair their ship midstream, so that if they've been taking a real beating, they can kind of regain some of their health, but it's very costly, especially to the player in first place, as Daniel is currently experiencing. The other ships sailing around are NPC ships. They are spawned at ports and travel to other ports. <laughs> Some of the NPC ships can attack you. Um, those are the attack ships, they're pirate hunters. The other NPC ships carry a lot of money and you kill them to get gold, which you can use to upgrade your ship. You get more infamy for killing attack ships, but a lot less gold. Oh yeah, so um, down in the lower left-hand corner, Sorry, the lower right-hand corner. You have the mini-map, which displays your current surroundings. Also, NPC ships. Other players appear as colored ships. And the two yellow sort of uh, wedge-shaped objects are the cannon cooldown, so you can know what, uh, how long you have until you can shoot another cannon volley off the side. And each cannon volley is uh, distinct, so you can shoot your left and right sides at the same time. And there's also a timer, which is counting down to the end of the game. Ryan was responsible for all of our shaders, and so all of the pretty water effects are uh, all his doing. The terrain is randomly generated, so um, ports are placed procedurally, uh, terrain height is placed procedurally. Daniel is very, very competitive. There is an Easter egg in here somewhere that I hope we can see. Daniel has to find it. He's the one. The Easter egg. The bear shaped Easter egg. <laughs> so, when ships sink, they drop debris, which is what the players are currently running over. The debris is how you get the gold from the player ship. If you don't pick it up, you don't get the gold. Collision, ship to ship collision is very overpowered and so people often try to sort of run into each other to pretty much instantly kill them. too good at this game.
So, hey guys, I just wanted to uh, say a couple words about the music in the game because it wouldn't have been possible without a couple of people that I really hope are in the audience. I know that there are a lot of sounds in here that are live, there are some that are just pulled from the net, and then some that I wrote originally by myself, but a special thanks to James Campbell, who did all of our mixing and recording. Special thanks to Alvin Toad, who's playing that smooth saxophone in the background. Anthony Teresi, who's the low one on the trombone, really appreciate that. Chris Chan, doing a fantastic job on the piano. I really appreciate Josh Sykes and Zach Lee for the low end, the electric bass, and the upright bass, respectively. So if you're here, thank you very much. So when they buy an NPC ship, it appears on the world map, and it has a destination that it will sail to. It'll sail around land, thanks to Daniel's awesome uh, pathfinding uh, algorithm. And it'll sail around land until it gets to that destination, and then once it gets there, some po the ports will, both the receiving port and the original port will receive some gold for sort of that transaction. So the economy is also sort of alive in real time. And of course, the ports don't like it when a lot of pirates come in and disrupt their trade, so they will spawn more attack ships to uh, help the pirates if they find a lot of their uh, trade ships getting destroyed. So as we get toward the end of the round, does anyone have any questions about the game? That's a great question, actually. So the map is actually um, a torus shape, so when you get to the end of the map, it loops around back to the other side, so it seems infinite, but of course it's not. As far as the actual dimensions of the map, I'm not totally sure. It's all in the config file and it's been changed around a couple of times since we have been playtesting it. But the map does, it, it loops around, so it feels very large. Any other questions? Yeah, there's a ton of NPC ships. Jeff asked how many are there. Uh, a lot, I guess. <laughs> it sort of spawns them um, on its own whim, and so we don't have a cap on how many it spawns. I guess earlier today it was spawning an obscenely large amount that we had to kind of scale back on. Any other questions? Uh, the map is procedurally generated. And so um, this game is actually, under the hood, quite simple. It's really just a 2D map that we've kind of extended into a third dimension to make it look prettier. So in, during the third week, Nicole and Robert prototyped the idea in the form of a 2D game that we use to sort of play test and get some concepts down. And really all of the collision detection, all of the game logic as far as movement is being handled on a two-dimensional plane rather than a three-dimensional volume. So it makes it a lot easier for us, especially when we were writing a collision detection system, it makes it a lot easier to think about, a lot easier to program and debug.
So the Easter egg is in here somewhere. There's only one of it, even though it's pretty big. It's, I'm sure. Uh, I thought I saw it earlier, at least a glimpse of it. Basically, we put the Warren Bear in as a rock. And uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar with the Warren Bear, it's the really big bear that's right out here that's kind of where it is. It's around here somewhere. So we were planning on having a giant sea monster called the Kraken come in around midway through the game and hunt the player in first place. Uh, we ran out of time for the art assets and for the programming logic for that, so we had to cut it, but it would have been a really cool feature. It was going to be, the original idea behind the game was to have it have sort of a steampunk feel. So we were going to have this giant Kraken with like a metal jaw and like a big clockwork motor that was spinning and it was going to like spew out of smoke. But we just didn't have the time to add that, so we decided rather than half ass it, we would just sort of cut it. Any other questions? Okay, 30 seconds left in this match. Daniel, your pride depends on this. by the way. Oh, okay, Ben won. Thank you very much uh, for coming today, especially with your patience with a, a little bit of the uh, slow start um, uh, for some of the games. And um, I just want to end with uh, a round of applause for all of the students in the class and the amazing job that they have done. You guys did a tremendous job. Thanks a lot. Have a good summer. Hope to see you guys again next year. <laughs>